Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. I hope you've all had a very happy Monday and a great start to your week. It's the first Monday of 2022. Today we're going to be delivering a cryptocurrency market update where we're not only going to tackle the realms of crypto, but we're also going to look at the external world around us as we know we are affected and influenced by many things that are taking place. This is predominantly going to be about the cryptocurrency market though, because we're in very strange times ladies and gentlemen essentially the bitcoin four-year cycle theory didn't play out in its typical end of cycle fashion where we saw in 2017 and prior to that 2013 um, a kind of epic parabolic run to the year now we've done lots of analysis on the lengthening cycle theory here you can see the previous cycles that i have in terms of bar patterns and you can see where our current cycle is and how it does look like cycles are not only extending but they're um, diminishing in terms of our Oh, I. That wasn't the case within this cycle. One of the main takeaways from this video is we live in very strange times. The past two years have shown us that and markets are getting affected by this. One reason that um, Bitcoin had such an amazing run over here was due to what happened in March 2020 and how they needed to really essentially inflate the money supply to stimulate markets, the economy and so on and so forth. And you can see Bitcoin has done what it was meant to do as a store of value and, and, and done very well against the dollar. And we've done a lot of looking at the dollar in comparison with Bitcoin, they are absolutely tethered. When you look at a Bitcoin chart, typically you'll look at it against the US dollar, you can look at it against a basket of other currencies, but we, we use the US dollar because it's really the main, it's the world reserve currency, if you will. So we will skim past Ethereum um, and ADA. Fear and greed index, we are still in fear. And it is weird because this hasn't played out. So, so many people are going, well, how does this now play out? Now, I believe that ultimately, you know, Bitcoin is going to continue to go up. The entire market is going to continue to go up. Nobody is more bullish on cryptocurrencies than myself. I think at a $2.2 trillion market cap, we have a lot of growing room. Um, and I think, you know, blockchain is the new thing. It, it's like the internet or prior to that, it's like uh, the PC sort of revolution. Um, and we see boom and bust cycles within those. Any emerging market is very volatile. Which explains a lot of the fear within these markets but certainly you know we do a lot of looking into things like cardano we do a lot of looking into things like ethereum or i've previously done a lot of looking into things like ethereum um and the future is a bright one it's just an unrealized one at the moment and we're seeing teething problems now we know um that jerome powell has spoke about and is tapering off bond buybacks I think this finishes around about March this year, so in a couple of months, or supposed to finish, providing there's no sort of you know lockdown or or black swan event that kind of um, promotes the Federal Reserve and, and other um, central banks around the world to keep printing money in order to have to stimulate the economy. If there was some sort of a catastrophic event, then of course they wouldn't be able to not only up interest rates but stop um, sort of bond buybacks and, and bolstering up the economy. So they aren't going to actually up interest rates until after March. He has said that, that it would make no sense and be counterintuitive for them to um, do the two things, the tapering and the interest rates at the same time. But how is this going to affect markets? Now, we often look at the FTSE, we often look at the S&P, and of course, we look at the DXY and we look at things like WTI uh, crude oil and so on and so forth, corn, commodities, a number of things, uh, even gold and silver, and we all try and weigh them up. Um, against the cryptocurrency space because we are at a 2.2 trillion dollar market cap playing a different game to what we previously have done the game that we were previously playing and you can see that these green lines are the halvenings was the four-year cycle theory game when we were moved as a market by bitcoin our own fundamental we're still moved by bitcoin but bitcoin was really um, moved by its own fundamentals with the halvening and how the price had to adjust in accordance um, with the supply distribution uh, to make miners profitable and so on and so forth we are now more tethered to what's happening in the world around us monetary policy and so on and so forth so how is this going to affect things well the FTSE is at all-time high which is the uk uh, top 100 stock index and the SP is also at all-time highs i you know I'm, I'm conflicted um with this i can definitely see room for a, a letting um but we have, and this was a very interesting tweet, so shout out to this guy, Charles Edwards. His Twitter handle is at uh, C-A-P-R-I-O-L-E-I-O. -E -I -I um, and he's talking about the fact that historically, you know, when we get an interest rate hike, there for the first six months is still growth. Historically suggests 
History suggests the beginning of rate hike regimes actually results in stock market strength for six months. And he's got a chart here where he's illustrating that and how we see, you know, with the turn of a new interest rate regime. So when they introduce new policy, typically the stock market will see strength for six months. Um, 10 of the 13 regimes, 77% since 1950 had positive stock market returns over the first six months, averaging 5.1% uh, for the stock market. You know, 5.1% sounds like a daily event on crypto. It is a daily event, even on some of your larger caps, um, even on something like Bitcoin, which is a trillion dollar market cap. You know, and that gives you a kind of idea of how small we still are as a as a market. And we're still very speculative. Um, we're approaching the start of a new regime now. And then he goes on. Um, uh, all else equal, a bullish stock market is good for Bitcoin, as we have seen in 2021. And he's absolutely correct with what he's saying. Brilliant tweet. Uh, for those of you that aren't following me on Twitter, it's well worth um, doing. Um, I have indeed retweeted this. I think I think that was a very smart tweet, and it's good that he's done the research on it. Um, so shout out to, to Charles. Um, and he could indeed be right. I mean, we're still seeing the stock market see strength. Um, I think stock, I think everything other than crypto is really quite overheated. I don't think crypto is overheated yet. I think it's largely got a lot of speculation involved in it. Um, but I think, you know, this is a technology that's going to be tens to potentially in the future, hundreds of trillions of dollars in terms of market cap. Um, and that's because it's going to be used and implemented. And we, we're so early on that adoption curve that that's the real value proposition of being in crypto. And when you look at the Brave New Liquid Coin Index, really what you're seeing here is adoption. This is why it's going up. And we've looked at a number of things like Metcalfe's Law and so on and so forth. So how do we tie this in with the crypto space? Well, if, if of course, you know, we do see an uptick in the stock market, crypto is likely to allow to flourish. If we see a downturn in the stock market, um, then you, you have a kind of adverse effect, if you will, um, on the crypto space. Um, and with rate, interest rate hikes, um, and they are going to do it, um, are they going to do it to any sort of significance is the other question, or are they going to be minimal? I would say they're going to be more towards the size of minimal rate interest hikes than they are colossal. And the main reason for that is because they can't really afford to do that. They owe debt themselves. They would cripple emerging nations. Um, not only have I been in crypto for the past sort of five years now, I've really been forced to be in finance and the world of it, and I've, I've, I've learned a lot about it and how it works. Um, and it, it all makes a lot of sense. Um, but it also doesn't. Finances, certainly when we look at pricing of commodity stocks, um, you know, crypto, it doesn't often make a lot of sense uh, because it's not really a representation. A price isn't really a fair representation of the overall supply um, and market cap is, is, is unrealized um, pretty much all the time. But that, that's for a completely another video. We have touched on it on a number of occasions. Um, so I think the interest rates they'll do will be marginal. Um, I think, you know, the environment for Bitcoin this year, I mean, how does this year look now that we're not following? Do we see lengthening cycle theory and, and we kind of just go up and we get to 100K or so um, and it takes us into sort of, you know, mid this year? In that time, altcoins could absolutely flourish. You know, we know we've got huge news around the corner for Cardano. You know, we know potentially, I'm not sure what sort of ETH2 status is, but they need to get that sorted. And if they do and they have staking and so on and so forth and they're already the most used blockchain, they'd be very bullish for them. Um, but Eve, Eve's still doing very well in terms of a chart. You know, this is a, this is a nice, healthy chart, if you will. Potentially getting a little bit toppy. Potentially, you could say you've got some sort of a um, rising wedge here. Um, there's lots going on, but ultimately, we, we, we've got to kind of see what takes place. And this is the kind of macro trend that I think you've got for Bitcoin. There is still the room for some more downside for Bitcoin. Now, if Bitcoin goes down, the rest of the market don't kid yourself here. I know, you know, we, we, we're often very bullish on altcoins is going to do the same thing. But this is essentially in the same way, this structure over here is applicable to what you're seeing here. And this, what many would call a rising wedge actually broke to the upside. Um, you could be seeing a similar thing here today. You have this kind of crash, you have a period of consolidation, and then you start to move up. You kind of come and make it what many people over here call the double top before we saw more downside continuation, but it actually turned out um, to set up structure for the upside. And you're seeing a similar thing take place. So there is still a possibility, in my opinion, that Bitcoin kind of drizzles before we see some sort of support and return move. And I would like to see this break to the upside. Falling wedges or rising wedges, sorry, don't always have to break to the downside in the same way that falling wedges don't always have to break to the upside. And we've shown you plenty of examples of that. So there's lots going on. Bit of a mystery year. And that's potentially why we're seeing so much fear in this market. This is something that's um, willy-woo 
is got to be one of my favorite, if not my favorite on-chain technical um, analysis guy. Um, he's, he's a lot more than that. He's a cryptocurrency commentator. Um, I know that he's partnered, I think, with a number of hedge funds, and rightfully so. You know, the guy knows exactly what he's talking about. And here he says, retail continues to stack stronger than ever for this year. Meanwhile, institutions and whales bought August slash September, sold in November slash December, and now swinging towards a buy zone in January 2022. Number of other things going on. We've looked at on-chain analytics from China and the Asian regions, um, more specifically China, and how they've kind of clamped down on cryptocurrency exchanges and how that's forced a lot of not only miners with the Bitcoin mining ban, but now um, you know just hodlers to, to, to become forced sellers. And that sell pressure is waning this year, so we're going to see that taken off the table. And you can also see what, what this really shows you is the fact you know, you've got your orange line here, which is institutional, and then you've got your... Uh, um, blue line here which is retail and you can see that these guys have been largely if you look at where they cashed out over here that was very correlated with the dip that we went into and they'd have been using this as a exit liquidity and it was i can't remember the name of the youtuber but he very accurately pointed out that that was definitely why copper uh, distribution uh, and this is we're in a different game and this highlight highlights this very very accurately completely different game that involves institutions and there's a new set of rules that come with that. These guys play a far longer game than we do, and they know how to shape retail out. And ultimately, the institutional uh, money is largely against retail. They use retail for exit liquidity and, uh, and entry liquidity. Uh, they use retail to accumulate against and to distribute against, and so on and so forth. So we've got to be smart. That's why I'm a hodler in crypto. I'm still very bullish on crypto, um, and it's important that I keep saying that. I've, I've never been so bullish. You know, this year... Think about how far crypto has come um, in the past sort of year alone. I mean, in the past eight years, it's it's done amazingly. The past eleven years, it's done it's done fantastic since Bitcoin was really created. Um, it's come too far and embedded itself with enough people to just now go away. It doesn't work like that. Um, this is another chart that was interesting that shows you there's a lot of institutional involvement and it's really very correlated with the price and what we're seeing the price do. Uh, Bitcoin held as public accessibility shares and you can see this is the spot etfs which typically would be bought by your sort of um corporates your institutions um and this is obviously michael Saylor down here in the um dotted line and this is corporate treasuries this is we are going to see this continue to uptick um you know we're just at a, a sort of awkward period at the moment and typically at the end of the year you will see institutions dump and deploy in the new year um so there's lots going on just some interesting things you know we're still a bull. We're still a cryptocurrency bull market. We're still going to see that continuation. I think we definitely follow more of a lengthened cycle, where you know, if you look at the cycle that we're currently on, we probably do something like this. Um, there, there's room for a lot of accidents to happen this year that could cause sort of macroeconomic and macro just global events on a whole um, that could affect our markets. And we saw that in 2022. We've oh, sorry, 2020 in March, uh, and we're going to probably continue to see these things, but we will act accordingly. So that's really all I have for you. There is a lot of suggestion that we are going to see and continue to see growth within the stock market. This is all good for crypto. Ultimately, we think crypto is still a bull and still going to break out to the upside. As long as Bitcoin plays that game, your altcoins are going to do very well within that. Certainly coins such as ADA that have a lot of huge news um, related to it and, and fundamental reasons for why we're going to see a huge demand and interest for it. Um, ETH as well. Providing, I, I have, I'm not, I've not been following the ETH. I gave up on the kind of ETH um, two side of things a long time ago. I still am an ETH holder. I think people think that I don't like Ethereum. I am bullish on it if they get ETH2 round. But what I will say is that the user experience on Ethereum currently, unless you're using a layer two, which a lot of people don't even know how to do, which just makes the user experience even worse. Um, the user experience on layer one ETH absolutely sucks. And anybody defending it is really, um, you know, a special interest of it. Um, but there's a lot of room for growth and improvement there. Uh, and I think, you know, being already the biggest um, sort of chain, smart contract chain that's out there with the kind of user base they've got, they could do very well if they see ETH2 roll out and sort, sort of fix the issues that they've got. So bullish on crypto as a whole. I just think we're in turbulent times. We're in uncertain times due to the fact that we're, we're now following potentially something else. We're in uncharted water, if you will. I mean, it's always best to approach with caution. I think this year I deployed a lot of capital and have been deploying pretty much all of my capital over the past four years. Where do I sit this year? Well, I'm very happy. I'm in a very, everybody's situation is different. Obviously, this none of this is financial advice. Um, 
I'm still, I've still got coins that I continue to accumulate on a weekly or monthly basis. Um, but what I am going to do is hold a little bit more stable coin. And I'm going to actually, I don't want to hold cash because of the inflation. But what I'm actually going to do is hold stable coin and farm APYs on it so that I can increase the amount of stable coins that I have. I can kind of fight that inflation, yet they're stable coins, so they're tethered. Um, and look for optimal entry points. So pullbacks, I'm going to be taking huge advantage of. Um, and play a more cautious game this year um, with still the expectation that the bags that I already do hold are going to do very well that I accumulated last year. So this was a bit of a longer, drawn-out cryptocurrency update. Um, I just thought many of you would find this useful, uh, informative and entertaining. Share my view on it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I'm going to love and leave you on that note, guys. Enjoy your Monday, and I will catch you all in the next video. I think this video is coming out around 5 p.m. UK time. Um, so there will be a series of other videos coming out. We've got lots going on on the channel. I look forward to sharing it all with you. Remember, if you want to follow me on Twitter, my Twitter handle is at Real All In Crypto. Um, well worth a follow as we keep you more timely updated. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy your evening, and I'll catch you all in the next YouTube video.